everyone, welcome back to Exeter City. We've got both Manchesters for you today. One of them's in the Carabao Cup, which we're taking seriously this time. A fair few games we played since we last met, which was all the way back at the beginning of September, I believe, with the, well, two losses. Somewhat undeserved, possibly, in both cases, but we bounced back well by not beating Fulham, but getting past them on penalties. We can't deal with Fulham recently, I don't know why. We drew them 0-0 in the league as well, not too long after that. Can't explain it. Since the beginning of last season, loss, draw, penalty win, draw. However, apart from a draw against Brentford and the most recent fixture, a 4-1 loss at home to Newcastle, we have won every single game. We conceded twice against Villa, we conceded three against Brentford in that 3 all draw, once against Spurs in the Cup, but the entirety of November, not a single goal conceded. So naturally we conceded four against Newcastle, football manager. All this means is, Premier League-wise, we are sat third. We're third and three points ahead of our opponents today. Manchester City, Liverpool a little bit off the pace. Chelsea continue to be off the pace. It's very confusing. And Darwin Nunes is the best player in the Premier League this year. Newcastle are back, it seems. Finally living up to their... Oh, they're up to third in the pre-season preview. Blimey. But yeah, finally living up to that pre-season preview. Of course, they did win the Europa League and got Champions League football that way, despite being... 10th or 11th in the league. Sorry, I just realised Steven Gerrard has become Liverpool manager while I wasn't paying attention. That to happen eventually. Speaking of managers, I don't know why, but there's been a huge wave of international manager appointments of late. This is the weirdest. David Moyes left his Premier League job of Sunderland. He wasn't fired from Sunderland. He left Sunderland to become manager of Iceland. Tell a lie. The weirdest one might actually be Unai Emery as manager of Moldova. He's only 56. And for some inexplicable reason, he's only managed Levante, Brest, and Al Moldova in this save. He won the Europa League several times. Anyway, Manchester City today, as you just saw there, now managed by Kike Setien. And team-wise, we're in a spot of bother because we are without Carlos Eduardo and now Prieto. Of course, the way that will be resolved is by keeping Pereira in the middle slot as the six foot three target man with annoyingly little jumping reach. Actually, that's a good point. Same jumping reach. He's five foot nine. Don't know why I even bothered. Okay, so every striker, apart from Eduardo and Fernandez, has 13 jumping reach. Pereira's in the middle, just by virtue of being taller than the others. And the rest of the team will be Sanchez in goal, Martin Avalos, Ampaduto, Iberio, of course, Markovic and Hessian behind Prazer, which has sort of become the go to now in those three roles. Yeah, we went with the full clates. It seems to work better. Fernandez, Pereira, and Uribe. Mansley got injured on international duty again. For a player that should be starting this team, He's had six starts all year, because he's constantly injured. For a man who isn't injury prone, it's incredibly annoying. Oh, and another team news. John Stones is being sold to Salzburg for five and a half million pounds. For a player who is clearly just on the verge of total collapse physically, his acceleration has actually dropped one point since I sold him. Or agreed the sale. He was already on 12 at that point with a down arrow. Yeah, he made one league start, got a 6.2, didn't play again. So 5.5 million for a player on the decline at the age of 33. Sure. It was the top end of his value at that point. I only say six and a half because I tried to weasel another million out of someone maybe, but no. In the background too, Ballard has agreed to drop his playing time to squad player, so inevitably at some point in December he will request to go out on loan, because that's how football manager works this year. Oh, it's a snowy Manchester City. Surely the Etihad has under soil heating, for Christ's sake. But Aaron Martin to pop this one in, and Avalos is there. Markovic, nope. There was one game, I think it was against Sunderland, where we scored two identical free kick goals. Yeah, we don't score free kick goals that often, but when we do, we do it all at once. It was the same highlight, just with different players. Bizarrely, it was Avalos slash Carlos Eduardo at the back post from a free kick that was to the right of the 18-yard box. Popped to the back post, and the 6 foot eight has put it in one apiece in two separate halves, I think it was. Manchester City team, by the way. Really weird. It's really, really strong, and then... Trevor Chalobah's in it. You know, you got Kimmich, Frankie De Jong, ironically. Bernardo Silva, Kevin De Bruyne are still there. Seven years in? He's got to be 34? Five? He's older than I think he is. Kimmich to the back post where Foden lies. They've got Mbappe, of course. Muziala's there with a rocket boot on his foot. De Bruyne's injured, probably because he needs to retire. I love the fact that this is a team celebrating. De Bruyne's just over there in agony. But yeah, this is an, an irritating goal because it just rockets off Muziala's foot here. He's defied physics with that. It's gone off his foot with more pace than it's went on through his foot. He's somehow created energy. Aaron Martin to Avalos. Edison. Not the highlight. 
do seem to be finding Avalos slash Carlos Eduardo more often from those corners. Don't know why. I don't know why taking someone out of the corners has actually made them better. It's actually one less man in the box four corners now than there was before, and for some reason, it makes it easier to find the six foot eight person, as Mbappe somehow beats Avalos to that ball. He's about a foot shorter. Aribe, there's a run there. There's still a run there. Pereira, I don't think, is onside anymore. Do it the first time, Romero. Sergio Fernandez is up for a European golden boy. Did get the email through on that one. Speaking of youngsters, we're also improving our youth recruitment again. It's now going to be exceptional. Yeah, Manchester City's, Manchester City team is a weird mix of existing Manchester City players, people who are probably now really quite old, and people who just shouldn't be there. <laughs> Trevor Chalaba has to be better than... No, not really. They did acquire Julian Ord, which is a problem, because he's quite good. He's one of the few budget left-backs, and now, of course, he's at Manchester City. So, never mind. Yeah. Worth looking into, if you're at the beginning of a save. Although, not performed fantastically. Did at the very beginning, but not... Hmm. And, of course, they now brought on Munier, who I did say is probably going to be the best player in world football at some point. Actually, 21. Not as good as I was expecting him to be. I suspect he might have been a bit stifled last year. I mean, obviously still worth an absolute ton, and it would have been fantastic for us to have acquired him when we could have acquired him, but naturally Manchester City, a bigger lure than Exeter. And actually, I mean, it's unsurprising, it is Manchester City, but a rare game where we are not the better team. Aaron Martin, even against Manchester City, who we did, uh, even against Manchester United in the league, who we beat 3-0, we were the better team in that one. It wasn't a fluke, and that's a goal. That's Augustine Pereira's first Exeter City goal. It's against Manchester City, and it's this good. Prezo, by the way, has a mohawk in the game. Doesn't in his picture, of course, because of the Z-Gens, but what a, what a finish. I mean, Edison himself's got to be about 35, 36, but he's a goalkeeper, so that's not as much of a problem. Ooh, I don't know if I just snuck that. Ampadu, Ampadu has either really good games or really bad games. It's really confusing. If he had inconsistent on his page, I'd understand, but he, he doesn't. Avalos gets the header. That's a novelty. A defensive header has occurred, everyone. Note it down, because there won't be another one for about three months. Pereira doesn't even jump. Okay, that's where it balanced out then. They gave us the defensive header because they weren't going to give us the offensive header. Hashim went for the edge of the box and that had been special. I'm almost tempted to take Ampadu off because he has been terrible. Don't do it often. No, I don't want Fafana as a right back, please. Castillo as a right back. That would be lovely. And actually Hashim on a 6.4 and booked has me concerned. Uh, I think for this one I am going to bring Fafana on. Just because we are in the 81st minute and youth doesn't matter now. Sanchez. Mounier, oh god, Bowen's in all of the space because we can't do passing, although neither can they, as Fernandez gets on the end of this one. Words were there, I didn't use them. Fernandez is going all by himself, even though there was a very clear run to his right-hand side there. De Jong just does some kind of elastic football with him. We hit the post. Praza, end of highlight. Still got the ball. Praza, Fernandez, turn and shoot, you fool. Markovic, where's this going? Is the, still in play. Tiberio, still in play. Now tackled, now they've got the ball and the highlight's probably over. I presume the post was the main part of that highlight, but it just went on forever afterwards because we just didn't get rid of it. Well, they didn't get rid of it. Fafana. Prasert still not really on the ball. Mbappe beats Fafana, but that's not that much of an aerial difference. Fernandez, we've got the ball regardless. Aaron Martin back to Fernandez. That was an odd one too. And an even worse pullback. Now they're attacking. The second he missed that tackle, this... This was the key moment there. Second Ballard missed that one, who of course was just subbed on. The second he missed that tackle, I just washed in silence. The miles would have put in big neon, or the big the big VAR sign probably should have just popped over there going, it's gonna be a goal! Oh, and Aribe's injured, is he? Cool. That's what we needed. More striker injuries. You did yourself proud. Wait, why was the second lowest one you don't deserve a day off? But yeah, I was gonna say when I showed you the table, we are third. But we have only played three of the big six prior to Man City, so this is the fourth. But we had beaten Arsenal and Man United. We had to play Spurs and we had to play Liverpool, but Liverpool disappointing. We have lost to Wolves, Newcastle and Chelsea, who are fifth, seventh and ninth. So they're in the running here. Give everyone a rest because Man United is in two days' time. Everybody's not out for long, and that's good. Might actually be back for the next game. Just to lighten the spirits. Hail Wang. It's always worth checking the Chinese national team every now and then for players with potential, and this is a goalkeeper with potential. He's a Bayern Munich, you know, though, so that's not happening. But it's possibly my favourite name of this game cycle so far. Hell Wang. Imagine that. Well, there's a major discrepancy between the letters and the star rating. 
I mean, what a time for this to come through right in the middle of an episode. But there's no defensive midfielders coming through. We're short of the required standard up front, which is actually kind of fine because we've had strikers in the past two as our leading prospects. Both of them weren't any good. But so there's three of them, but they're all terrible. This is a terrific group of players. 1B. Golden gener Golden Golden Generation. B C E E E E E E F blank. I think they need to update their definitions. Blimey. Football manager, sort it out. It's one thing telling me I've got A rated players coming through and the five star golden generation in December, only to be then mugged off in March. At least give me the hope. Well maybe it's better not to have the hope. The one thing I'll be interested to see regarding Manchester UFC here. I actually said that without any sense of irony that time, but no. Yeah. But the one thing I will be interested to see is what kind of team they put out here because Spurs did rotate, it is worth saying. We didn't get full strength Spurs and we punished them accordingly. Wolves win 5 0. Now I put up a fight. Also, hello, Shashua, formerly of Tenerife, a name that I see pop up quite often in the Premier League in this year's game. It's always nice to see him. Him and Shaq Moore seem to make their way to the Premier League sometimes. Transfer policy. Look to use youth setup. Good facilities. Then give me good players. Manchester City and Liverpool, of course, you just saw there remain, along with Wolves. Premier League games are happening. Now, one of the benefits here is that Man U do have European commitments as well, as do Spurs. Ribe actually isn't fit enough to start this one, so we are... Oh, God. Full second string. I'll keep him on the bench just because, frankly, I need the numbers. Actually, similarly, Mario needs to be on the bench just in case I need the numbers again, because I've lost the only person who can play left-back other than Thierry Small and Martin. However... Despite Ampadu 6.2, which I suspect might have been for an error that may or may have not been his fault. Ballards, however, we saw Ballards. And it's kind of a case of punishing two people at the same time and therefore lesser of two evils. So Prezel, though, might actually need to step out and we'll put in Youngberg Herrickson in front of him. Actually, probably the best thing to do here. No, I'll leave it as is, I think. Unchanged otherwise, other than those two changes. Unchanged other than those two, one enforced, one not. And I just... Completely on autopilot, and I just completely on autopilot went past their team sheet. We'll pause a little bit longer on their dynamic one. I often get questions about Baba Mansley. They didn't do the dynamic. I often get questions about Baba Mansley why he's not playing when he's on returning into fitness, not entirely at full conditioning levels of fitness. It's like, oh, he's not injured. Yes, he is. Kind of. They've scored off the upright in within two minutes. Well, that's fun. Nash is their number three. I don't know who he is. He might be a new gen. But they do appear to have got a good team out here because of the players that have popped up so far with name tags. I see Sancho and Ansu Fati. Rashford, Fernandez. There was a question about Fernandez actually in the thing we jig. The pre match questions. Illich. Illich weirdly has made his way to Man United. Palinia. I think apart from those two deeper midfielders, this is their first team. As I had no idea what was going on there. It went straight across the box and Hesham's got the ball back. I thought it was pausing for a penalty or something. Hesham to put the ball in. Fernandez at the back post. Pereira's there. Alte Bayer is a cat. Wasn't the main part of the highlight. It's continued. Fernandez not going to get on the end of that one. Sancho, oh no. The momentum is no longer with us because we have lost two on the bounce. So I feel like this is about to compound it. That was a bizarrely good whipped ball to Illich. What on earth? Four goals of the season for Illich. Maybe not as second string as I thought. Is he better in this year's game? Because he barely survived at League One two years ago. I mean, it's a fantastic goal, and what the bloody hell... Sanchez, by the way, Sanchez may have kept five clean sheets in a row, not because of him. If you test him, he will fold at the moment, and I do not know why. They've had two shots, and they've scored both of them on target. They've had two shots on target and scored both of them. Thankfully, they've had three shots that have missed, otherwise this might be 5-0. Avalos has pulled ahead of Sanchez in terms of overall star rating on Lona Vigo. Good God. That was actually the one good striker that's still on the pitch. We're technically the better team, which is the depressing part of this. Now, the irony here was I was focusing on the Carabao Cup because I wanted to get European football one way or another. But we're in a good position in the Premier League this year. Depay has come on and already tired. So maybe there is a little bit of rotation. Maybe Rashford isn't first choice. Because Depay has come on there and is already tired. So clearly he played in the previous game. Maybe they rotated in the previous game. Who knows? Fafana. Maybe the AI did something actually sensible. Dalot? Although why Man United would care about the Carabao Cup more than the Premier League, I do not know. Memphis Depay at the back post? Nope, Illich is the one that's scampered after it. Well, Ansu Fati's clearly offside. What? How the hell is he not offside? He's run off with his arm up. He's onside. But how? Who has played him onside there? 
Man United getting their revenge on us. Who has played Ansu Fati on side? It's the right back. No, it's Hesham. It's not even a defender that's played him on side. We are going to see the clarity of this. How is my box-to-box -box midfielder the one that's lagged behind there? I don't have a substitute for Aaron Martin, but I do have one for Hesham. Two starts coming on. Angelo's I'm changing all three midfielders. The strikers are terrible as well, but Surat Prazer, Angelo and Toussaint on in some arrangement. It doesn't really matter, other than Prazer as the AMC. Toussaint's barely played a game. I wish I could show you us winning. Oh, we've scored a goal. That's happened a couple of times. It gets to Avalos now. Doesn't always get it in the goal, does Avalos, but more often than not, if he doesn't get it in the goal, it goes to the person at the back post. Well, we've got a goal, which I think I means, which I think... Well, we've got a goal, which I think means we've scored in every single goal. We've got a goal, which means I think we've scored in every single game except the two Fulham matches. Just both of them, as Fernandez should have scored that, even though he's offside. But yeah, Sanchez on a 6.1. They've had four shots on target and he's let in three of them. Have loss. Why did you persist with Augustine Pereira? We have three injured strikers. Supposed to make me feel a little bit better. It looks like Manchester City have progressed as well as Wolves and Liverpool. Three teams that... We don't do well against. Ancelotti's already been set by Chelsea, blimey. Tony Mowbray is the favourite for Chelsea. But yeah, out of this lot, obviously we beat Arsenal on day one of the season. We consistently lose to Wolves. We don't have a great time against Manchester City. We've done them a couple of times, I think. I don't think we've beaten them, but we have drawn with them a couple of times when we were miles off the pace. And Spurs we've had the better of a couple of times as well as Manchester United, but not this time. But Liverpool consistently we are destroyed by. And Wolves, you know. So if there were going to be three remaining teams, it makes me feel better to know that those three remaining teams are ones we don't do well against. Uh, we got Newcastle in the FA Cup, by the way. And that could be a sensible place to bring you back, thinking about it. Because there's a Spurs game directly before it. Now the problem is, because Robert Sanchez has had clean sheets five in a row here, he's come out of those games with good ratings. Even though he was barely tested in them. Two shots for Everton, three for Burnley. One for Palace, and he's come out with a 7.4. Sunday last year had five shots on target, so all right, 7.7 .7 is relatively worth it. Look at that game, though. No penalties in that, just a 3xG off the game. So he's got some nice inflated ratings because of the fact he's barely had a shot against him. And then you see where you do test him with relatively competent players. He can seize three immediately. Enrique Avalos, however, still not really progressing on the goalkeeping technical side of things for some reason. And his world permit date has moved up a day. But he has edged ahead of Sanchez in the overall star ratings. I actually can't see his form. But I can show you Vigo's schedule now. He, in the cup, he's only got a 6.8 there against a team in a massively lower division. But he's come out of a Barcelona game with a 7.5, so they clearly dominated Vigo. He's had a couple of poor games here against Sevilla and Bilbao. But other than that, 7.9 against Atletico. They beat Atletico 4-0. In fact, Avalos appears to be either all or nothing. But 7.1... 8.1 against Real Madrid. It was this stretch here towards the beginning of the season that got my attention and got me curious because this is when Sanchez was pulling in 6.5s consistently. An 8 against Espanyol, a 7.3 against Espanyol, just by the fact they lost. 7.5 against Getafe. An 8.2 against Ponferrada. And again, a much lower division team. Oh no, they're not. They've made their way into the top division somehow. I think they might have been relegated in my Tenerife save, which is why I thought they were third tier in Spain. But no, they started second tier. All in all, it means his average rating there is 7.23 with two player of the matches. And even with five clean sheets, well, seven clean sheets all told, Robert Sanchez has a 7.11. And more goals conceded, but more games played. But it's a higher conceding rate, I think. 21 and 16 compared to, was it 14 and 12? The question is there whether to recall Avalos or not. We'll see, I suppose. And you'll actually get the answer next time out because it will be in the January transfer window. So until then, thank you for watching. Ta-ra.